Tonight we'll discuss uh, the first case scenario, uh, which is a 40-year-old uh, patient uh, with systemic lupus, erythematosus, asthma. Uh, she's non-epileptic, with last seizures. Uh, attack was two weeks back. Uh, she has anemia and also latex allergy. She is coming for laparoscopic hysterectomy due to menorrhagia. Her lab results are fine except her hemoglobin is 11.5. Her ECG is okay and chest x-ray showing no problems. You may find this case in your scenario as a long case or short case for rapid discussion in 5 to 6 minutes. Now, the first question will come to you. Are you going to anesthetize this patient? And the proper answer will be no. And why? Because this patient has anemia. And as per WHO recommendation, each anemia for elective surgery should be investigated and treated before surgery. And the next question is, why you consider this patient has anemia? Again, the definition of anemia as per WHO is hemoglobin below 13 in males, below 12 in non-pregnant females, and below 11 in pregnant females. Then, he will ask you, what are the classifications of anemia or which type of anemia this patient has? And then you can classify anemia into two types two major subtypes according to microscopic or pathological. The microscopic picture either microcytic hypochromic, normocytic normochromic or macrocytic hyperchromic. What's the difference between these three types is how much hemoglobin in each cell and the normal hemoglobin per cell is 27 to 31 picograms per cell or the volume of the cell which is 80 to 100 and some, some, some references 105 femtoliters per cell and we are discussing only clinical I'm not discussing any science which is not coming in the exams in these videos so how else you can classify anemias you can classify anemias according to the pathology which is deficiency problem or hemolysis problem. Then he will discuss with you in this scenario why do you think this patient in particular has anemia? And now you can dig in those diseases with the patient and find why. This patient has seizures, so she is on antiepileptics. If one of these antiepileptics is carbamazepine, carbamazepine causes aplastic anemia. So you can pick this one if you are intelligent enough and start with. Or if it doesn't come to your mind immediately, you can say this patient is admitted for surgery for menorrhagia, so this is chronic blood loss which may cause anemia. What else? This patient has multiple chronic diseases like asthma, systemic lupus and different other diseases so it could be an anemia of chronic disease and then he may ask you if he wants to give you a bonus okay what do you think in this patient the type of anemia if it's anemia of chronic disease then you will say anemia of chronic disease is a microcytic hypochromic, hypochromic anemia okay now I was asked myself this question, so what is the total iron binding capacity or what, how you investigate this anemia, then you will tell him, okay, hemoglobin, hematocrit, after that, total iron binding capacity or T-set, transferrin saturation. Transferrin saturation is another synonym for total iron binding capacity, they are both the same. So what is the normal? 20 to 50 percent so if it is 
below that what is, does it mean and if it is above that normal what does it mean if it is below 20 percent that means there is an iron deficiency anemia if it is more than that so there could be a cause of hemolysis and iron binding capacity is high then the next question about anemia why you are worried about anemia why you are afraid to anesthetize a patient with anemia and here I need to hear four words always remember you are tight in time so he needs to shift to the next question and your time is precious so you need to tell him the most concise words so number one he needs to hear from you it is because anemia affects the oxygen carrying capacity or the total oxygen content in the blood and you can write the equation of CaO2 equals hemoglobin multiplied by 1.34 multiplied by saturation plus PO2 multiplied by 0 0.003 then demand supply mismatch third point it affects the mortality and morbidity blood transfusions if I need to transfuse the patient in theater that carries another risk plus if it's hemolytic anemia the complications of intravascular hemolysis then you will ask you okay this patient has anemia now how do you treat that so anemia can be treated by one of three iron erythropoietin or blood transfusions depends on severity chronicity of the condition or acuteness of the condition so the next question will be if you are planning to give iron for this patient how you are going to give it there's two forms of iron iron tablets by PO and intravenous what's the difference between both of them the iron tablets takes up to four weeks to start its action but the problem with the intravenous iron supplementation is anaphylactic shock so you should be aware of that then I was asked what is the dose of iron you are giving the iron tablet is 325 milligrams what are the problems with treatment of anemia you cannot give iron supplementation for patients with peptic ulcer disease because it may mask their melina or mimic its melina okay so you have to keep your eye on that point complications of blood transfusion if you are discussing anemia it's a must it's one of the most important topics in the exam you have no excuse to be hesitant in this answer that's why I'm recommending for you table I will put it down here as an image or I will put it in the video so this table is discussing in four squares either immediate and delayed immune and non-immune and you start to tell him your answer square by square for example there is immune and non-immune immediate and late so for the immediate immune febrile hemolytic reactions and non-hemolytic reactions febrile febrile non-hemolytic reactions urticaria and anaphylactic shock and the delayed ones are the delayed febrile hemolytic reactions and delayed non-hemolytic reactions and trolley transfusion related acute lung injury and he may go further in the transfusion related acute lung injury the non-immune ones early and late early which are the electrolyte disturbances like hyperkalemia and hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia hypothermia uh, 2 and 3 dbg depletion uh, citrate toxicity all these will come in the early and in the late like what like infections and when you are discussing the infection please again classify classify or die remember the rule classify means viral bacterial protozoal and proteins 
viral like hepatitis B, C, HIV, whatever. Bacterial is Yersinia, Enterocolitica, uh, Klebsiella. Then protozoal like the malaria. Don't forget the protein which is non uh, organism induced infection, which is a pro uh, protein of Crossfield Jacob disease or Prion's disease. If you answer half distance or three quarters distance of the question like that, I'm sure he will shift to the next one and will give you the full mark in this one. Now, we have to stress on two more items in such discussion, which are the Jehovah's Witness and how to minimize blood transfusion in these patients. How to minimize the blood transfusion in a patient with anemia or in Jehovah's Witness? So you have to tell him pre-operative measures, intraoperative measures, and post-operative measures. Pre-operative measures, for example, if the patient has anemia, to optimize his iron and stop any anticoagulant drugs. If can be, always say that you will liaise with the hematologist and Intraoperatively, you can use hypotensive anesthesia, regional anesthesia, uh, you can use tourniquets, whatever you will use. In, uh, you can use local anesthesia with adrenaline, uh, limb raising, whatever the procedures you will do. And post-operative, avoid hypothermia and uh, always keep your patient warm because hypothermia increases coagulopathy. That's a discussion about anemia and its surrounding from a clinical point of view. Please don't forget complication of blood transfusion. Know it as your name, exactly as your name. There is no mercy if you don't know how to discuss this one. Thank you.